Hello and welcome back to the new Ariador server. Now, today I've got a couple of tasks I want to do, but first things first, let's actually just have a quick look around the base and I will show you exactly what I've got up to between episodes. So let's do that and that, and the first thing that you'll see is the minecart elevator is back in place in a proper position. So I think this is looking a lot better. Now if you remember guys, let's just jump over here. It was, oh gosh, somewhere here-ish? It was probably about here. And it was really obstructing the view, whereas now it's kind of in the background there. So that is looking good. And I need to do some decoration with that. I haven't done any extra work on the beams or on this area. I had a few really good suggestions down in the comments and PMs and all that kind of thing. And yeah, I'm thinking of building up a little bit of a bank of dirt around the side here a little bit. So it looks a little bit like the soil's been displaced, you know? Um, but yeah, this is going to be ongoing. This is something I'm just going to do in between episodes. And when I get something that I'm happy with, then, you know, I'm going to know what it is and I'm going to do it. <laughs> um, so yeah, and we also had another comment or another idea, which was to have stairs down here as well. So instead of using just slabs and, and full blocks, having some stairs. So it gives a little bit more of a broken up area. So yeah, that's what's been going on down here. Now, let's see if I can manage to fly. Can I fly? One, two, way! Oh no, <laughs> that didn't work, nearly. Yeah, you've probably noticed there as well, my custom texture for my elytra has vanished. I don't know why, I, I've got no idea. I'm gonna have to have a look into fixing that again. Um, but yeah, I've been updating to the new Optifine versions and all that kind of thing, so yeah, I'm just sort of getting organized with that again, getting back into my pace. Okay, and up here, we've reorganized all of this area. So I've reorganized the storage here. So it all collects up down here. I've sort of, I've already been collecting up some iron. So you see some blocks there. Things are going quite well. And yeah, this is all a bit different. So I've cleared out a lot of the walkways that were here and changed them all over for glass. And this is more just like, so that I know where the bottom line of this build is. So that I can get an idea of what I'm going to be building within and where my layers can go and all that kind of stuff. Also, finally, this is new. This is a new lump of redstone that I added in between the episodes, and this is like an auto reset circuit. So the idea is that when a golem falls down, they're going to go through the tripwire hooks, which you can see just there. Okay, and then that sends a signal over here, which re empowers this memory circuit here. Okay, now the idea is that if this gets fully powered, i.e. no golems for I think five minutes plus a minute for the reset then it's going to send a signal over here and it's going to reset again so if for any reason I'm not getting golems then I'm going to get an automatic reset so if I've left the area and come back and I'm not getting golems it's just going to reset itself which is going to be great it's going to be very very handy so that's a new thing as well so the big job that I want to work on today is actually going to be a overworld gold farm, okay? Now, I asked people in my Discord, I said, what do you want to see me do in the next episode? Because I've got a lot of ideas, guys. I've got lots of things I want to do around here, and it's knowing where to begin. And one thing that I've wanted to do is an overworld, <laughs> overworld gold farm. So that is what we're going to be doing today. So as you can imagine, I'm going to need to collect up a lot of obsidian. I'm also going to have to have a little think about where I want this gold farm to go. So yeah, maybe, maybe it'd be quite cool just here, right there. But then how am I going to deal with the collection? Maybe I just get them flushing forward and they drop down that same hole and they work out a different way of doing things. I don't know, I don't know. I'm gonna to have to think about that. I need to work out where I want to put it, but first I need to get a lot of obsidian. So let's just go down. Oh, no, missed it. <laughs> Failed it, not nailed it. Let's go down here and see what we've got already. So, a little bit of obsidian, a little bit more obsidian, a little bit more obsidian. Um, 
Look at all of these emerald blocks. Maybe I should take the emerald blocks. Yeah, because what I want to do is I want to set up, in the end, these three beacons. I'm not going to pretend, guys, I didn't go fight the withers for these. <laughs> I just went and spent some of my diamonds because, you know, I'm doing quite well, so I don't mind spending the diamonds. At some point in the future, we'll probably do some proper wither fights, but at the moment, I'm just happy to have a ready supply of beacons that I can buy. So, actually, let's go like this. Let's get the shulker box out. Put that down there. Right, let's put a load of iron in there. That's nice and safe. And I want to pick up all of these emeralds because I'm going to use those for the beacon that I'm going to be putting up. The super beacon in the end. Okay, so let's go and do that now. Okay, so we're here in the end and I'm getting ready to go and do some severe demolition of these pillars, or at least a couple of them. I don't feel like doing all of them, that would be quite a task. But yeah, I'm going to be doing quite a bit of demolition of those. So I want to get some regen, I want to get some good stuff going on. So what I thought was, I might just donate these beacons to the end. We've already got one over there, that's Wild Trekkers. Um, but yeah, we're chatting in the Discord and I thought it'd be quite cool if we did this. So, let's see, I'll just try and show you what I mean. Let's take out those nine. Let's grab some, not of that, sea lanterns won't help you light a beacon. Come on, come on, you know better than that. Right, like this. So, bum 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 bum. Right, so we should see that light up. And there we go, that's going to be a really cool way to know exactly where the middle of the island is. So that is going to be a beacon to the centre point of the island. Now, I can put three of them underneath here. And I could actually plan to make sure that there is always going to be space for upgrades. So we can always have enough beacons. So if I feel like it, I might just buy a couple more beacons and fill this out. Um, so let's see, one there, one there. And then eventually sometime in the future we get some more in elsewhere around here. So like that. And then we could have five beacons, maybe even upgrade into nine at some point. So anyway, I'm just going to clear this area out down here. I'm going to build these up into full beacons. I'm going to use up all these emerald blocks um, because I'm not using so many of them. And if we ever feel like it, have I got some glass on me? Yeah, let's just show you this. This is quite cool. Whoops, not like that, like that. Uh, da, da. There we go, and it comes through blue. So I was thinking we could have a couple of white ones and red ones. So it looks like the new Reador colours. Okay, so I'm going to get on with that and we'll be back in a moment or two. Okay, so that is my three beacons set up. And I thought a little bit of jump boost is kind of handy when you're doing building and stuff, which I'm going to be doing around here. Um, I think we've got regen on a couple of them. I think that Trekkers has still got regen on. And I actually put one of these on regen. So, you know, whatever, it's fine. So we've got a bit of everything going on here. Now I'm going to get up to the top of one of these. Let's see. Basically I should have effects all the way out to the edges now. So oh, I love a little bit of jump boost. It makes a massive difference. Life is just so much nice with a bit of jump boost. Oh my goodness. All the way to the top that quickly. Right, so the plan is I'm going to sort of get a couple of pillars like this. I'm going to get on top of them like this and I'm going to line myself up like this and then just do this, hopefully. And just work my way down. <laughs> this is going to take some time. So yeah, I guess, I guess we'll see you in a bit. Okay, so there you go. As you can see, I have taken down four of the pillars and 
I actually logged off for a couple of days and I've been working on something in my test world so I haven't been back here and I'm kind of surprised that everything's still as I left it. So the thing that I've been doing over in my test world, let's make sure I haven't left anything behind. Do do do. Hi my hi Meg. Sorry. <laughs> Just checking some stuff. Um so what I've been doing in my test world is I've been playing around with overworld gold finds and I came up with something that I'm pretty happy with. Oh wow, a little bit of lag there, sorry guys. So what we're going to be working on and I'm going to talk you through a little bit because I think it's a little bit different. It's not exactly the same as what everyone else does. So yeah, that's going to be fun. And also I know I've got some post. Look at this from Zloy. Thank you very much Zloy. Let's have a read of this together. Dear Groover, that spaceship of yours is pretty metal. Thank you very much Zloy. I think that is an ironic joke that it's an iron farm to be a spaceship. But the thing is, the joke is... This iron farm, which is pretty metal right now, is about to get even more metal. Because I'm going to add in the gold farm on top of it. Now, I came up with a way. Let's see, have I got my stuff on me? No, I don't. I'll have to go get sorted with that. I came up with a way to add the gold farm on top of the iron farm. And I can get it to produce XP as well. So I can get it to produce gold, run flesh, XP, and swords. Um, I don't particularly want the swords, and it's kind of a low-level XP farm, but considering it's going to be FKable, I'm kind of happy with that. I think that's a really good result. So, let's get up, get organised and get up there and start building this thing. Okay, so this is the shape that I went for. And the reason I've done this is normally you see the gold farms have just got obsidian, then a gap, then obsidian, then a gap. And that's always to make sure that the pigment fall through the gap as early as possible. So you're trying to get the pigment out of the farm as quickly as possible to free up some space in there and free up the mob cap and all that kind of thing. Now this one I decided to go for the maximum number of spawning spots possible. So I completely ignored that. So all of this is going to be spawning space, all of this is going to be spawning space. Now the reason that this is going to work is because I've got the iron farm just below and I'm going to organise a way that I'm always going to have a golem or two sort of hanging around this area and when they see a pigman they're going to give the pigman a hit and the pigman's going to become aggressive and it's going to tell all of its friends, all of its friends are going to come running over, they're going to jump down this hole. So what you get with this is you get sudden runs of pigmen coming off the edge and going down. And that's what I want, because that way I'm going to get the golden swords and the XP from this farm, which you don't normally get. Normally you just get the rotten flesh and the, and the nuggets. So this is going to be really, really cool. So you can see what I've got. Let's get on and get this finished. Back in a mo. Okay, so most of the stuff up above is all finished. I just thought I'd add these in real quickly now. Now what these are going to do are, they're going to stop the golems from falling down. If they come from the corners, it's going to stop them from falling down straight away. It's just going to hold them up here for a little bit longer, which is exactly what I want. Right, so let's go up top and light all these portals. Do I have everything I need? Not quite. Let's grab some iron quickly. Um, at least I couldn't see any iron there. Let's put it like that. Let's clear those out, tidy this up. Right, let's hope that this is all set up correctly, doing some funny bouncing. Um, right, I'm going to have to make these a wee bit wider, aren't I? And I'm going to have to run some safety bars around the side. Let's just put that there so I can get in. Let's take that away. Yeah, I'm going to have to do something about this. Maybe all that I need to do is cover it over. Maybe it doesn't matter. Like that. What do we think? Oh yeah, I still need to put in a load of trapdoors. Hmm. Okay, I better do the trapdoors now because that will be a real pain to do once all these portals are lit. So let's go get the wood for that and make some trapdoors and get that done.
Okay, so that is all of the trapdoors in place. I need to put in the safety bars around the edge because I don't want any of the pigment going off this way. So let's do that now. What have I got? What have I got here? 36, not quite enough. I don't want to make out of obsidian. Glass is perfect, absolutely perfect. So we're going to go there and just come straight across with that. Right, and now it is time to start lighting some of these. I've gone and left my iron down below again. Um, right, let's just grab a little bit more. Um, I just need the one. So let's just do that. Is that him who did that? Yeah, I think he's triggering the wire. Hopefully that won't be a problem. If it is, I'll just have to move things around a little bit to make sure that they're not triggering it all the time and stop it from resetting when it needs resetting. Um, yeah, let's take those couple out. Put them back in. Right, flint and steel time. Let's see how this goes. I've got all of my particles and animation switched off at the moment because my computer has trouble handling this and it may just be the end of the computer so I'm just giving it half a chance not to die. Um, right, one more. Um, ouch. I might as well go through here and just see where it leads. Oh, it comes out at my portal. Well, I guess that's okay. That's not a big problem. Let's see where I go back through now. Because this might be more of a problem. Um, actually, that's not bad. I might have to add an extra portal a little bit higher up in the nether just to make sure that if anything does go through, that it doesn't end up in areas where players are going to be. So let's go back up there. Let's see if we see any pigmen coming down. There's a few people on... Oh, it's just me. Huh. I thought there's a few people online. <laughs> so I should be able to give this a proper test in terms of rates and all that kind of thing. So... Um, how are we going to get that then? I don't know. Oh, there's a pigman. Right. I'm just going to go down to the bottom here. And I'm going to watch what happens. Come on, punch him. Oh, you wimp. What are you doing? You should have given him a good punch. Darn pig man. But anyway, this is the idea that one of them's going to come down and hopefully... God... Oh, you idiot. You idiot. He's watching the wrong pig man. Like a fool. He just let two go past him. And he's off. Okay. But as you can see, this is just creating a slow flow. But what will happen is when the golems punch the pigmen, you'll get a sudden flush of pigmen coming out. Oh, yeah, this is going to be a slight problem. I need to change how I get this thing to measure activity and do the reset. I'll have to think about that. I mean, the other thing is I'm going to have to change how... I collect items down here as well. So this tube is only going to go down so far now. And then I'm going to get it to stop and I'm going to create an AFK point where I can get the XP to come to and the items and everything. So, hey, look at these guys. Anything happening? What did I get? I got a little bit of gold, tiny little bit of gold, so that's not too bad, that's not too bad at all. I think I've got these guys set up to die to crush damage at the moment. Yeah, I'm going to need a few more of them before this really takes effect. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have to think about this reset system now. How am I going to make it reset with various things going down all the time? Anyway guys, that took a little bit longer than I expected. It took a couple of days to sort of do a bit of designing on this thing and work out how I was going to make it give me the XP and the maximum number of 
spawning spaces as well. Now, the one thing that I found about this is that you need to be sort of close to the to the portal for it to actually produce pigment or for the pigment to move off the portal. I'm not quite sure which one it is at the moment, but I'm going to do a bit of investigating. And then next episode, I think we'll organize how we're going to get this XP and items and all that kind of thing sorted out. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please do leave a like. And if you want to see some more, drop me a subscribe and I hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.